subscribe to our youtube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates every 6 months india today group does its mood of the nation survey and gives us reason to look at national politics the state of national politics with some data on public opinion now there can be many views on this public opinion surveys but the fact is that india today has done it for the longest time and they built a reputation with this and also any data you don't any data is good when it comes to political analysis particularly if it's data that you've seen over the years so you have comparisons to plot on a graphic so you know what's up what's down what's up what's down and as usually happens when it says something good about somebody say usually if it says something good about the prime minister of the day or the government of the day everybody celebrates it on that side the moment it shows something not going right people start raising questions and the same thing happens on the opposition side also but data does not discriminate it is the same poll which in the past has shown narendra modi drop in 2018 into a trough then rise up rise up rise up until he swept the election again in 2019 with more seats than before and then since 2019 generally it's been fairly consistent but over the last 6 months there is a change so once again as i start looking at this data and using it as a kind of adhesive to put together the pieces of the political jigsaw in india thank you very much india today group now there is is there good news for narendra modi um i think the only good news is that the news is not bad enough so let me just say i use the example of glass being half full or half empty now for narendra modi and his government uh, the expectation is that glass must be full 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 because half full means that there is a there is a loss of popularity because the glass had been almost full these last couple of years now if i may put this sort of in a color coded way or a classification way then i'd say that there is not very good news for narendra modi there is reasonable news for narendra modi and there is also news that's not bad enough that could be worse that's not bad enough to alarm him it could be worse but that is a warning on the most positive side i will tell you uh, what is still there but even what is the most positive element in this latest survey shows a decline so first of all what is the most worrying thing for narendra modi in this survey and that is the headline of this survey that is the highlight of this survey now one question is asked in each of these surveys in january and august respectively now the question is who do you think is most suited to be the next prime minister of india at this point only 24% said it should be narendra modi it's more than anybody else but it's only 24% why do we say only 24% because in august 2020 that's exactly one year ago and remember by that time the first wave of covid had already hit us in august 2020 last year one year back 66% said he is the most suited choice to be the next prime minister 66% to down to 24% and if you think it's mostly happened all because of the second wave of covid that is not true that's what data and dates tell us because that that is the conclusion we will immediately draw instinctively but when you look at the data and the dates that is not the conclusion because this rating already was down to 38% in january 2021 january 2021 there was no sign of the second wave in fact january 2021 uh, prime minister modi in his address to world economic forum was saying india has saved the world from the pandemic from a calamity and we'll now be making we basically that we have defeated the virus and will now be giving vaccines everybody and then we know what happened march onwards so in january there was no whiff of the second wave if in fact if anything in january there was a sense sense of victory that india has beaten corona virus coat and coat under the leadership of prime minister narendra modi in spite of that his ratings had fallen 
as the most obvious choice, preferred choice to be the next Prime Minister from 66% to 38% in six drastic months. Now, you might say that only happened because last year the economy really collapsed because of the long lockdown. And that we may be coming to the point, the nut graph of this survey. This survey is about the economy. And a lot of the negatives that you see coming in for Narendra Modi and his government and the performance are linked to the economy. That is the big meta or mega or the main political point from this. And I, I, will, I, I will explain to you uh, how I come to that conclusion. And, and I, I will do all of that using data. Now, in August 21, this has come to 24%. That you can see over a year, over a year, it's a fall of 42 percentage points. 42 percentage points is phenomenal, right? Now, this is the bad news. I will also tell you the news which is good. It's not better than before, but it's good. It's good enough. It could be worse. That is the approval ratings of the Prime Minister. Now, all over the world, leaders' approval ratings are sought. In terms of do you think your leader is leading the country in the right direction? Do you think your leader, leader is leading right? Leading right. Very few leaders in democracy get it above 50 percent. Because people in democracies are, don't get easy, don't get happy so easily. So even at this point, while Narendra Modi's ratings as the most preferred prime minister have fallen from 66% to 24% within a year, his ratings, his affirmative ratings or approval ratings are still 54%. 54%, you, you might think, is fantastic. What's he complaining about? But remember, there is a little twist. Six months back, in January this year, these were 74%. So there's a 24 percentage points decline. Not 20% decline, it's much more than 20% decline. Uh, 20 percentage points decline. How much is, how many percent decline in sheer percentage terms was from 74 to 54 it is? You take out your calculator and calculate. I can't do mental math so well. But 20 percentage points decline over a base of 74 is a lot. Uh, okay, uh, that is the big deal. Now. If the Prime Minister's ratings have declined as the most obvious or most preferred choice to be the next Prime Minister, who's gone up? And therein lie some very interesting surprises. Look at, look at Yogi Adityanath. In January, he was 10%. Now he's 11%. So he's only gone up by 1%. But January, when he was 10%, he was 28 percentage points, not 28%. 28 percentage points behind Narendra Modi. At 11 now, he's only 13 percentage points behind Narendra Modi. And now it's very clear that in the BJP, and obviously this is coming from committed BJP voters, for committed BJP voters, he is now rising as an alternative and the gap between him and Narendra Modi is closing, not because he's rising a lot, he's riding a little, rising a little bit, but Narendra Modi has declined. So that is one headline point there. Then you see all the others. Rahul Gandhi gets 10%, right? He was 7% the last time, a uh, little bit up. Uh, Didi, Mamta Banerjee gets 8%, she was 5% the last time. Amit Shah gets 7%, he was 8% the last time. I'd be so inclined to say that the 1% he's lost has perhaps gone to uh, Yogi Adityanath because these are committed BJP voters to the right of the larger base of Narendra Modi voters. Uh, then Sonia Gandhi and Priyanka Gandhi have four each. So let me cut and dice this data for you in a different way again to draw some larger political messages. Once again, you might think, oh, Narendra Modi is doing so badly. He He's on the skids now. No, because when voters choose leaders within the same party or same conglomeration, you know that if one of them becomes the leader, most of this vote will go in that direction. So what I've done is, from these ratings, I've, I've added them, I've made groups. So the BJP group, that is Narendra Modi, uh, Yogi Adityanath and Amit Shah, 24 plus 11 plus 7, 
that comes to 42%. So 42% will vote for a BJP Prime Minister. Compared to that, if I add the Congress group, that is Rahul Gandhi, Sonia, Priyanka, that is 10 plus 4 plus 4, that's 18%. So it's a big difference of 24 percentage points between the BJP and the Congress. It's a big, humongous difference. Congress is nowhere near the BJP by way of challenging them. But if you add all the opposition, that means Mamta Banerjee, Arvind Kejriwal, everybody, then it comes to 10 plus 8 plus 8, that is Mamta and Kejriwal, 10 plus 8 plus 8 and 4 plus 4, that is Priyanka and Sonia Gandhi, that comes to 34 percent. Then the gap becomes closer and we have to see over the next six months whether this gap closes further or Narendra Modi again manages to pull away. But this is what the big data point and the political message here is. And I will tell you, uh, I have not told you what the message is. I will also tell you in a minute why this is coming essentially from the economy. And once again, after a long time in Indian politics, economy has become the central point. Now, just the seat projection. Once again, if you say, oh, who will come to power? If there is an election, definitely NDA will come to power, according to this poll. I am not making any prediction. But with lesser numbers, the important thing is, for the first time since the 2019 election results, this survey shows that BJP will not pass 272. BJP passed that mark in 2014. They went, went to 303, 303 in 2019. But today, for the first time, it shows the BJP getting 269, but NDA on the other hand will get 298. So we'll be comfortable as a group. But remember, NDA together in 2019 was 353. From 353 to 298 is not good. Also, what that means is that coalition partners now have leverage. But remember, again, I will add the qualification for fairness where it's needed. It is a much smaller NDA than it used to be because Akali Dal has gone away, Shiv Sena has gone away, and we don't know what the new NDA will be when an election takes place. But if NDA as it exists now goes to the polls, it will get 298. Overall, BJP will marginally fall short of majority. So any partners will then have some leverage. That is the difference. There is not much change in the vote share. Congress party, the most consistent of all, 20%, 1920, 1920. So this is the minimum vote that the Congress party gets. Kabhi nahi jayega Congress party se. And that is Congress party's core brand value. 20% of India's voters will vote for the symbol of hand. Question for Congress party is, how does it take this 20% to 30%? And that is not happening. You don't see any sign of that happening. But you see the BJP declining a little bit, 37% to 34%, 3 percentage points. 3 percentage points on this base will be about 10% vote decline. Now, you might say big deal, but it is big. It is a big deal because another couple of points decline and BJP then goes, falls further down from that figure of 272. Today is 269. If it gets to 250, 245, then it will become a genuine coalition government. It cannot be run the way Amit Shah and Narendra Modi are running the government now because then coalition partners will have their demands and will be able to seek value for the few seats that they bring to the table. So that is what the cause of concern is right now. UPS numbers will not change very much. Congress's numbers will only go by 7 or something. So that again you might say is good news for Narendra Modi because no opposition is coming up. In fact, as we look further, uh, people's confidence even among Congress voters in Rahul Gandhi hasn't gone up. In fact, the only positive thing I find for Gandhi family is that the percentage of people who think uh, Gandhi family might be good for the Congress party, that has improved marginally in the last six months, just a little bit. Now, we come to the whys of this survey. Why has Narendra Modi's image taken a beating? It has taken a beating if the survey is right. And there is nothing to indicate in the survey's past track record that anybody is fixing it or that it should not be right. Anybody can make errors. But directionally, it has always been right, it's mostly been right. There is enough, uh, enough of odds there for me to commend it as a reliable indicator of public opinion. Now, 
what was narendra modi's basic proposition when he came to power in 2014 that was acche din because remember inflation was running high at that point uh, india's economy runs well sometimes badly sometimes well then once uh, pranam mukherjee phase came in the finance ministry lots of things happened and then scams happened so economy was in a tailspin and the national mood was glum and pessimistic so he came to power then on the promise of acche din now uh, important thing is after that after so many years after 7 years of his having been in power how many people think that that their economic status has gone up it is just in the 20s it is quite ridiculous it's very poor uh, that tells you where the problem is because people don't think they are doing better right uh, only 20 odd percent think after 7 years think that their economic lot has improved under modi that that is what is punishing you right now then 69% people say that after the pandemic their income has gone down 17% say that that is one in seven one in six 17% say i have lost my job or i have lost my business that's a lot right it's uh, 69% saying my income has gone down that is very bad news uh, and that's how economy is now becoming centrist is 2019 we said between 2014 and 19 also india's economy economy did not boom particularly after the demonetization which mind you still has 8% 8% just single figure 8% people backing it they are really committed modi voters obviously so they say it was a good thing uh, anybody who says demonetization is good thing today even it's one in 13 has to be a completely devoted modi voter because you know most almost nobody accepts that anymore in fact narendra modi himself and his government don't talk about demonetization it's as if it never happened but demonetization slowed down india's economic growth and then it went into a decline 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 a decline, decline cycle it was pretty bad by 2019 unemployment was up so people were not now voting for narendra modi on the promise of acche din and that was indicated by the survey results in 2018 particularly particularly at the end of 2018 beginning 2019 and then what happened then barakot happened then some other things happened and then a nationalist mood built up i had also written then that narendra modi has repackaged his marketing proposition now for the indian voter from acche din and economic growth now it had become hard nationalism hard hindutva and a hard war on corruption so this was a three legged stool or a three pronged trident which had now led him into power with even more votes so people bought into that proposition as well at this point nobody said acche din fantastic double digit growth etc people said pakistan ko mara ghar mein ghus ke mara abhi dekho mandir 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 banayenge etc etc aur dekho sab corrupt logon ke upar case kar diya sabko band kar diya aur ye chal raha hai it's a clean government so that that three pronged sort of spear or trishul that led modi to his second victory now what's happened to those things uh, what happens what's happened to those things is that many of those have now got blunted they've also got blunted because people are really hurting and people are hurting because there is a hole in their pockets and they don't know what to do so look at the economy handling of the economy 6 months back 66% people said narendra modi's handling of the economy was great right today only 47% people say so so a fall of 19 percentage points once again i keep drawing the distinction between absolutes and percentages 19 on a base of 66% is a lot right it's almost like close to like 30% now people who said the performance is average has gone up from 21% to 32% people who say it's poor or very poor has doubled from a low base 10% to 20% so once again since i try to look at data upside down or inside out also sometimes 
if Modi has lost 19 percentage points of those who say that his performance on the economy is superlative, that is 66 percent to 47 percent, where has that gone? So 11 percent of that has gone to people who say average. So maybe these are his voters who are now doubtful and who are not so convinced. And another 10 percent have gone to poor, very poor. Now you might say 10 plus 11 is 21. He has only lost 19, 19 percentage points. Do kaha se aya? That's because in the last survey, two were don't knows, can't say. So, so those also have now gone on the doubting side. So there is a big setback on the economy. Then what is the biggest problem before India right now? The largest majority of people say it is inflation. How big a problem? Last, larger, largest majority means 60 percent people say it's inflation. About half as many people say it's COVID, right? So it's prices. That is something Modi government has stayed away from so far because they said they kept inflation low. They just kept on raising the price of fuel knowing that the middle class that uses the automobile owning middle class is their committed voter anyway, the Hindu middle class. So they didn't care. But now food price inflation is going up. Oil seeds, uh, so edible oils, pulses, etc. are going up and that's beginning to hurt. 60% people now think that price rise is the biggest issue. What is again a very serious issue in India? 59% people say unemployment is a very serious issue. Modi government's economic policy is Atnirbhar Bharat. Six months back, 46% said great idea. Today, only 38% say great idea. So one of his flagship programs is now losing support very quickly. Again, if 59% say unemployment is a very serious issue, somewhat serious issue, 24%. That means 83% say that unemployment is a serious issue in the country. How many say that unemployment situation is improved in the country or employment situation is improved in the country? Hold your breath. It's 1%, right? Uh, 1%. So again, there is a serious problem there. Now, uh, my economic situation has gotten better or worse. 17% said worse in January, 32% say worse now. Better, 41% said worse in January, only 21% say now. That is half. It is, it is quite drastic. The same, it was 36% earlier. Now it's 43 percent, so thereabouts. So it tells you again that people are hurting on the economy and that is damaging Narendra Modi and that is something I think he does understand and he's trying to do a few things belatedly on the economy uh, like this retrospective law and other things. But frankly, economy does not respond so quickly to any changes. This will take time and that is now becoming his big problem as India goes up for elections in particularly in Uttar Pradesh next year. Now there are some other nuggets there. For example, 66 percent people of India want statehood, statehood restored to Jammu and Kashmir. Only 22 percent wanted to remain as union territory. But I would say those are sort of, uh, sort of side lights of the survey. Let's stick to the basic point and stick to the big political issues. So corruption was the other issue. We said economy and you can see performance is very dismal. At least people think, the very vast majority of people think the performance for the economy is dismal. It has gotten worse. They have lost their jobs. They are worse off than before. Very few think they are better off than before. That is quite consistent across all parameters. But look at corruption. 65% of Indians now say that corruption under Narendra Modi in seven years has become worse or remained the same. How much? 65 percent, that is two out of three, say that corruption has worsened or remained the same after seven years of Narendra Modi. So all these cases, the agencies, people being arrested, etc., etc., is not impressing people at all, probably because they understand that this is coming more from politics than a genuine war on corruption. Because you can't fault the people, the people are always right. We say in marketing, the customer is always right never fault the customer. So people are always right. How many think it's improved? It's in single figures. Don't even ask me. So again, the second one has also gone. 
Now you might say, what about nationalism and what about Hindutva, etc. Now, 45% people think you should talk with Pakistan uh, if that will lead to uh, no terrorism, etc. So there is that strong anti-Pakistanism is now not there. Although on the positive side for Narendra Modi government, people think, more people think, even more people think now than in January that he has handled the Chinese challenge better. But the loss of support on corruption is also hurting heavily his image. Now comes to Hindutva. Once again, very interesting findings. Ram Temple and Article 370. These were the two key propositions of the BJP and RSS, the two key Hindutva propositions. So today, 29% of the voters say that great idea, the temple is being built. So that is a little less than BJP's total vote, but I'd say that the core vote is now saying it, the temple is a good idea, but beyond the core vote, there is no oomph in the temple idea. It's not cutting with others. And it's actually even more pronounced in the case of Article 370. Only 22% of the respondents say that they, they are very happy that Article 370 was abrogated. First, two years have gone past. And second, also it only impresses the hardcore of the RSS, but not very many more. So these are things that are adding up to Narendra Modi's problems. But on top of all that comes the weakness of the BJP chief ministers. And that you see in the ratings of the chief ministers. And in each case, chief minister has been rated, first of all, in his or her own state. So in fact, if you look at the 11 chief ministers who have been rated, Nine of them are non-BJP chief ministers. In fact, two chief BJP chief ministers who feature here are Himanta Biswa Sarma at number six and Yogi Adityanath at number seven or a bracketed number six because both have 29%. Now, that is bad news for the BJP because what about chief ministers like who have been very popular in the past, Shivraj Singh Chauhan, Vijay Rupani, uh, Uttarakhand. I am glad nobody raised the question, nobody would dare to because most people in Uttarakhand would say, who's my chief minister, right? Because so many have come and gone. Uh, sometimes even I get confused. Uh, so in this situation, you can see that now the BJP has become much too dependent on Narendra Modi. That there is almost no chief minister who can swing the state on his or her own for the BJP. So BJP has suffered a loss of state, of, of strong, state leaders, that's a very important point. Now, before I let you go away, I will take you back to the economy and then give you a slightly, a slightly fun point. Back to the economy, will my salary or my income improve in India? Only 17% said that. What is 17%? 17 that is like one in seven, right? One in six, not good. Will it worsen? 34%. What is 34 as a percentage of 17, it is twice as much as 17. So twice as many people in India think my income will decline as think it will improve. And 45% think it will remain the same, which means 79% people in India are not optimistic about their incomes. And people who are not optimistic, they go and take fixed deposits or they go to the stock market or buy mutual funds. They don't buy new things for their house, they don't buy new houses. And unless that happens, India's economy can't grow. And it is that pessimism that is driving down Modi's image right now. And that has to be fixed. I don't know how this will be fixed because he's smart. He'll do something. Having said that, I told you I will also give you a little fun point. The fun point is, there is a question in the survey that says, if not Modi tomorrow, who will be the best person in the BJP to replace him, to succeed him? Now. Six months back, 30% said it should be Amit Shah. Amit Shah is still the tops there, but he's come down from 30% to 24%. Another person has gone up marginally from 19 to 21. Now, the only difference is between 19 and 30, between him and, him and uh, Amit Shah earlier, there was an 11 percentage point gap. But he's now 21, so the gap is only 3 percentage points. That is between Amit Shah and you must have guessed by now, Yogi Adityanath. So he is now rising among BJP voters as, 
as the personality they like most of all after Modi at an increasing pace. Amit Shah is still ahead, but this gap is being filled. In fact, just for acad academic reasons, if you count Rajnath Singh, Nitin Gadkari and Nirmala Sitharaman, the next three, if you add all three of them, it comes to about 24%, uh, uh, which is the same as, uh, as for Amit Shah. So that is where, again, one mega political point from this is the rising stature of Yogi Adityanath among BJP's committed voters, particularly those towards the right half of the BJP.